Yeah, you're right about that, bro. Uh, I mean, I'm a living testimony on that. You remember when I called you? We we <laughs> laughed about it the other day. I called you. This was back when the market was just stupid. I'm talking about you couldn't get an offer accepted. I don't care who you were. You know, well, if your buyer was willing to pay, you know, fifty to a hundred thousand dollars over, then okay. But mm-hmm. if you was just out here in the market with a with a you know your average family trying to get them a house, you couldn't get an offer accepted. I, and I called Rich. Crying on the phone, what, Rich, bro. We we I'm seen trying. thirty houses, bro. We we submitted fifty offers. I can't get it accepted, bro. What am I doing wrong? Talk to me, talk to me, man. Help me. Yeah, this shit was hard. Now, real talk, like I'm, I still consider myself rather new. You know what I'm saying? Like I got in the game in what 2015, and I respect those that been in the game and went through recessions and all that because they have to survive that to still be in. And we 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 experienced that. COVID era. You know what I'm saying? We re experienced that where the interest rates were low and everyone was buying. It was it was crazy. crazy. You know? <laughs> like you couldn't man, a house hit the market and there's twenty people going, there's offers everywhere. It was just it was real competitive. But you know, the only strong survive. You know what I'm saying? And we we became we were products of that, you know? And even even with marketing on Zillow and getting buyers from out of state like it was hard to get a, a offer accepted yeah like if you wasn't coming big cash way over asking like the, the market's seen some, sh- some 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 shit you yeah. know don't so, forget about waiving the appraisal contingency if you wasn't waiving the appraisal contingency you wasn't getting an offer accepted waiving appraisals waiving inspection periods or you know no inspection you know what i'm saying like it went from you know obviously we you used to do 15 day inspection then we Ten day, then seven day, five. No, no inspection. We we just taking it, bro. Not even seeing the property, unseen, unseen offers. Like yeah, it yeah. was gangster. You Yo, know? it's crazy because during that time, I actually let's talk about that too. Let's talk about helping out family members and friends in the real estate industry because shit can go south. You know what I'm saying? You can lose relationships helping out friends in the real estate game. I mean. There was a point in time where I had a friend that came to me and asked me to help him purchase a house. I said, okay, let's do it. And long story short, me and him fell out because he didn't understand the appraisal contingency, mm. right? I was telling him, you know, hey, man, we, we definitely want to have the appraisal contingency on there. And he was telling me, no, nah, don't worry about it. Just, you know, waive it because we wanted to get an offer accepted because we, ex- we we submitted about three or four offers. They, wouldn't get it, they weren't getting accepted. So he was telling me, forget about the appraisal contingency, bro. Let's just waive it. And I was trying to explain to him, brother, no, <laughs> you don't want to. I don't think you understand what that means to waive an appraisal contingency. Right. So, so Rich, what does that mean when someone is waiving the appraisal contingency? I mean, they're basically saying that if this house doesn't appraise, I'm going to move forward with it regardless. You know what I'm saying? So I know that you think the house is worth X amount, but if the bank says that it's not worth X amount, I'll pay the difference of whatever... You know it is. I'll pay the difference. That's gangster, bro. Like, I'll and the that. difference could be what? Whatever that gap is. If the house appraises for, let's say, uh, three hundred and fifty thousand, right? Mm. But you offered four hundred thousand. Well, you got to come up with fifty grand. Yeah, to cover that difference. For you sure. know what I'm saying? The appraisal contingency allows us to protect ourselves. So, okay, if it doesn't, if it's not worth what you say. It, if it's not worth what I think it's worth, I don't got to pay for it. For sure. You know what I'm saying? And by waving that, you psh, shot yourself in the foot. But that's what people are willing to do. People are willing to say, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll pay the difference, whatever it is. For sure. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Yeah. So it's good that, you know, I, I tried to explain to him, like, brother, you don't want to do that. And he didn't he didn't understand what that meant. And we end up actually falling out, man. And it was a relationship that we uh, we haven't spoke to this day because of that, man. It's, it's, it's crazy. Listen. And I'm trying to protect him. I'm like, brother, I'm trying to protect you. Bro. Well, you know what? That's a good situation because you actually tried to, you know, put him on the game on how to work. The problem is I feel that when working with friends and family, two things. And if, if anybody's new getting into the business, one just be prepared that a friend or a family member will do business without you. They will go to a stranger and get an opportunity without you. You got to expect it. Just expect it because it's going to happen. I, bro, I've been in the game since, what, 2015? And it, it's happened to this day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I just had a family member caught with somebody else. Mm. You know what I'm saying? 
And I can say this. When things go south, then they come back to you. For sure. You know what I'm saying? When things fall apart or the offer doesn't get accepted or somebody fumbles the ball, then they want to call you. It's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's just one of those things. When, you, when, you, when you're new in the business, that, that happens. So when it comes to friends and family, I would say don't shortcut your listing presentation. Don't shortcut your buyer broker agreement. Don't shortcut anything. You got to treat them like a regular customer because those are the people... They're sleeping on you, sleeping on your knowledge, sleeping on your expertise. And at the end of the day, they're going to double back and be like, damn, I should have came to you first. It happens all the time. For sure. Yeah. What about what about me and you just laughed the, um, the other day about a listing that we had um, it was about a year, a year and a half ago. We were <laughs> representing a property down in Fort Lauderdale. And this lady was adamant about us selling her house for 400,000, right? We had to talk her down to at least listing it at 380, but she wanted to sell it for 400,000. Right. And we happened to look um um at the records uh, on the market to see what that house actually sold for cuz we ended up falling out with the lady. Things didn't work out. Long story short, we looked online to see what that house sold for and it actually sold for about 350. So it sold for about $30,000. Less yeah. <laughs> than what we had enlisted but, for. But when you when we when we told her that the price the house was overpriced based on the condition and she should drop the price, they fought us. Yeah, she didn't want to hear that. They fought us on that. You know what I'm saying? And it takes now you gotta hear from someone else. Yeah. Other than the people you originally been working with, who are the experts, you know what I'm saying? Now you gotta hear from someone else, okay, yeah, your house is overpriced based on the condition. Because a lot of these people, you know, they, they think that they they think the value of the house is this much, but they forgot how much they neglected the house. Yeah, for they sure. They did no repairs. You know, they, they didn't keep it up to standard, you know? Yeah. And they don't want to compensate for that, you know? I, I think I can get this. And, and that was a time when the market was, you know, everyone was greedy. You know, sellers were greedy. They were trying to maximize what they could. But then that reality check came in when it don't sell. When, that, when, them, when those buyers do an inspection and they see the true condition, you got to be prepared for that renegotiation. Yeah. You know? Okay, I'll pay what you listed it for, but oh, now that I've seen it, mm, yeah, no. I got to do this, 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 this. How about you give me a credit for that? And then they, there's like a harsh reality because that net, that, that net amount that they walk away with, they're not ready for that. 